let me at the outset uh, thank dr rajan vargis and all the people who are involved in uh, inviting me to this particular uh, program almost uh, last week and uh, this day we are listening to lot of aspects related to pd5 inhibitors and uh, i think this is one of the very very elaborate exposition of uh, the topic related to pd5 inhibitors though we can see certain uh, repetitions all said and done each of those uh, presentations have made us understand what really the minute details also which are important in uh, understanding and uh, dealing with uh, our clients what i will do here today is actually a very brief exposition of uh, what was there before and uh, what has actually has happened after that without going into any of the details related to what we basically call uh, the finer aspects of pd5 inhibitors what is their structure what is the metabolism what is the duration of action what is actually the side effects it can produce they are not the concerns on which i will be trying to deal with of course my mentor dr raj brahmabhat has uh, produced a very elaborate description of pre and uh, post pd5 i may not be able to match the erudite uh, presentation made by dr raj brahmabhat but all said and done i will be trying to look into what precisely was happening earlier what precisely happened uh, at the time of uh, what we basically call uh, pd5 inhibitors which arrived and then subsequently what actually precisely has happened pre and post era of pd5 inhibitors in uh, sexual medicine practice is my presentation and we are all well aware sex is something like a forbidden uh, topic and uh, long ago what darwin mentioned that we don't know much and uh, even today if you open the book the same story is being written but this picture really changed with a uh, lot of things what we basically call uh, epochs in uh, history so my presentation will contain uh, nearly about uh, seven areas very briefly i will try to touch upon each of these things keeping in mind that you should uh, make us aware that uh, where we are actually heading three major epochs what i can see is actually uh, the contribution of uh, india the kama sutra and what we are uh, talking about and uh, the second major revolution which liberated women is actually what we basically call uh, arrival of uh, contraceptives the third one i can say is uh, the hiv there is the time we started talking about uh, what actually the sexual problems are about and uh, i still remember very vividly the university talks aids and many other such programs more particularly for school children adolescents in particular and others how precisely one can uh, go about though initially the who started with an idea that uh, if people can stop sex things will fall in a line but it doesn't work that particular way was actually one of the things the third major revolution happened was actually the arrival of uh, what we basically call the passion pills and in that of course the top in the line was actually the viagra we are all well aware that uh, some of the concepts what we were making earlier that uh, sex means it is actually the physical coitus the concept changed to penetrative part of the only one aspect of it participative and recreative are uh, much more important aspects so the making love and having sex they were two different uh, concepts altogether we started speaking about sexual revolution that is happening but all said and done till viagra came it was actually still pretty muted in our country at least so let us look into what we basically call uh, how prevalent the sexual problems a time was there when we believed that sexual problems are not existent to in fact uh, it is there but we are not able to see and were well, quite a few studies came up which spoke about almost about one third of the male population and half of the female population having the problem to in fact you start treating them for any other problem the drugs what we are using almost a double actually what we precisely call uh, the type of difficulty at they can present with whole range of uh, epidemiological studies that came into being both in the west and even in indian context we have our own uh, epidemiological study carried out in uh, suttor the second area was um, the confusion related to the etiology i still remember we as psychologists or psychiatrists we used to speak about uh, almost 90 to 95% psychological then a sort of uh, many studies from many specialty clinics were in uh, diabetes hypertension antihypertensives many other drugs in fact actually they produce problem 
now we have reached a consensus wherein almost about uh, every case what we come across there is something organic and something psychological it is actually the mixed etiology what we need to definitely look into a time was there when we used to speak about uh, whole range of uh, psychodynamic concepts starting from freud who propounded uh, structural theory what we basically call uh, topographical theory and to the unconscious and other related things which produce quite a bit of difficulties even though today I'll, we are uh, talking about they were not that much important but all said and done let me tell you when actually individual is not uh, responding or there are some difficulties are involved please do keep it in mind the conflicts and the certain unconscious mechanisms which are actually operating so ultimately what we are trying to talk about is one definitely need to a comprehensive way we need to look into the whole problem the second one was actually the comfort the practice related to and the emphasis on socio cultural factors that was one of the very important change that happened dr rajesh mohanbat emphasized on the socio cultural factors in a very great detail but all said and done pre viagra era this was actually one of the the important component we were uh, trying to talk about clinical practice establishing rapport to proper history collection as one of the the key important and even today i don't think those particular things have changed even though viagra has come into a time was there when you used to almost make a decision related whether it is psychological organic based on the clinical factors only but there were very few organic uh, related uh, tests were available at that particular time maybe we were uh, assessing the diabetes status hypertension and few of those type of things but nothing more than people started realizing that something which can be made into listen to us but penis is one organ which doesn't listen that particular way and even today that particular concept holds good people believed that uh, ed is a science it is not just magic everything happens in the head was actually one of the idea but now we know that there are a lot of things that are actually one need to keep it in mind when we are trying to talk about so the third area which we definitely need to look into actually the research in fact the study by moni and lot many others in fact has brought out very clearly how hormones whole range of biochemical structural things and the brain as such in fact actually makes whole lot of differentiation in case of men and women there is a wide difference between how actually each of this particular uh, sex or gender reacts and there is a need for uh, sex and reaching orgasm in fact the process involved is actually something totally different was one of the very very important uh, aspect people documented the differences which are present but if you try to look at uh, orgasm both in case of man and woman it is same but to reach that particular level the time involved and the processes involved were actually something totally different in fact this was one of the very very common uh, this thing and so also there were quite a few studies related to how actually the man and women use differently the fetishes use of pornography how men feel bored female passivity and uh, sex drive and we are trying to talk about <clears throat> the female sex drive is primarily and predominantly inhibitory these are few of the things very well uh, documented and then the idea was at one particular time the plicit model wherein uh, there are only few people who need uh, permission there may be another little category of people where limited information may be sufficient some people need specific suggestions but only very small number of people who may be necessary to be taken for what we basically call uh, intensive therapy at that particular time we used to use the people have ignorance that need to be corrected by education they have cultural taboos by permission giving they have poor communication uh, skills in fact how you actually teach them developing this type of things there is a particular factor which is creating difficulty how it can be removed and uh, the problem can be set right and more than anything else the range of psychological issues redefining his performance redefining and removing his uh, performance pressures and the concepts related to the ladder that means it has to be smooth from one step to the other and the arrival of the sensed focus and related things actually in fact these were the few of the very common things what we used to carry on but let me tell you the only thing that has actually changed is the pdfi inhibitors can be used as shortcut method but that is not just sufficient at all in fact i'll come to that particular point i'll try later so the guidelines for couple therapy that uh, ruling out co comorbidities establishing ground rules an intimate team and many of these type of things were actually positively taken and uh, sex therapy what we used to carry out in the couple was related to whole range of behavioral techniques 
systematic desensitization was one of the the common uh, this thing and uh, in fact it used to work but the whole difficulty was all these processes were involved actually had a lot of difficulty in the sense that time necessary the duration of uh, treatment that was carried out the therapists training and other related uh, proficiency in that and the patient's willingness to participate many of the times in fact uh, when we were uh, looking into the female related issues many of the problems can be just sorted out by just looking into how by precisely her pressure and uh, what we basically call the difficulties can be reduced to the minimum education the leisure and the importance given used to bring about wonderful changes as far as the people are uh, concerned with the particular type of difficulty then we used to use lot of cross sexual herbs dr sundar goyal very elaborately explained about how precisely each of these type of things were uh, working on so my job initially what i would have spoken a little more in detail on this but has been solved by many of the presentations which came we did one study before uh, pdfi era what we can talk about uh, private hospital and uh, what we basically call the educational institution what actually was found was that almost half of the patients what they were there in the clinic were related to the sexual miss and misconduct we used to call them dot syndrome we used to call them uh, psychasthenic syndrome in case of females related to white discharge and weakness and other related but what was very striking is even when those people were actually you were uh, trying to treat many of them never used to carry on treatment for continuous this thing whether this really changed in fact we are going to look into so the pd5 when it arrived our own understanding related to how actually this can be managed even if you take an example of uh, male erectile dysfunction almost all the process were related to what we call how to improve libido acquire and maintain erection and actually the ejaculation related area what are the type of difficulties so what is important is if there is a problem in libido this pdfi inhibitors are not going to work was realized much much earlier this is one of the reasons every sexologist or uh, any practitioner of sexual medicine should keep it in mind that the sexual response cycle understanding of these particular things and necessary that how actually the therapy can be carried out in uh, uh, subsequently there were many areas it were actually considered extremely important one is actually identified it curable causes of erectile dysfunction lifestyle changes providing education in fact as far as these three things are concerned things have not changed and the best sex therapist or the good sex therapist would actually almost always keep all these factors in uh, mind so the pd5 inhibitors since it came the intracavernous injections vacuum devices intraurethral topical alprostadil many of these type of things actually maybe actually became defunct to some extent what we as a psychiatrist can say but there are a lot of other specialists who are carrying out all this type of things what actually the clinical practice guidelines that came up subsequently in many of the areas all emphasize that first line therapy is actually the use of pd5 inhibitors in fact this has happened as one of the main stay of treatment of uh, any type of problem so oral ed therapies only if it fails then you go for uh, what we call second line therapies or maybe the third line therapies so one has to keep it in mind that remarkable changes that came up with pd5 inhibitors is actually something something revolutionary it actually modified the whole picture how actually we got you try to look at in fact the whole range of uh, guidelines that were recommended almost all of them emphasized on pd5 inhibitors are the first line therapy for uh, any of the problems unless you rule out certain areas this should be the first line i'll not go into the details related to each of these type of things except that see for example eudenophil where its effect on uh, what we basically call endothelial functioning avenafil to a great extent that way but almost any pdf inhibitor has functionality related to this area recommendations that came up what we call the first five recommendations have been arrived from the third international consultation medicine and uh, phosphodiester type inhibitors are effective safe and well tolerated therapies for the treatment of men with ed is one of the very very well documented uh, point and there are no significant differences in the efficacy safety and tolerability of pd5 inhibitors pd5 inhibitors are the first line therapy for most men with ed where specific contra- unless there is a specific contraindication present these are the few of the important point next five points were actually related to what actually were depending upon the specialist what one can use but all said and done 
there were few more other points that actually in fact uh, subsequently that came up the conclusion related to the meta analysis related to all the studies that came up and the data that was available that one actually i just try to narrate in great detail for the simple reason that these are actually something extremely important all pd5 inhibitors have an excellent efficacy and safety profile no evidence that one pd5 inhibitor is better than the another patients using different pd5 inhibitors have similar perception of improvement after treatment direct comparative studies are lacking and preference studies are inconclusive you open to try different pd5 inhibitors this improves both compliance and uh, satisfaction dose strat for given pd5 inhibitors to the maximum tolerated dose so if you are trying to talk about sildenafil citrate 200 mg tadalafil you are trying to talk about maybe 40 mg is actually one of the higher dose and still higher dose also one can actually try this is actually one of the indication that has come up in the research despite the favorable clinical data there is a high dropout rates exist up to 50% of the patients stop treatment going to the issues such as cost inadequate efficacy and many more than in fact uh, which were narrated by the patient side and from the service point of view why actually the people partners point of view why people discontinue some of the medications has been brought out in the earlier presentation the clinical question how to select the best pd5 inhibitor in a given individual actually depends on many factors one of the important point is actually careful assessment of the patient sexual profile the expectations and other issues related to the relationship so what one can talk about is that uh, there is a detailed knowledge of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of each of these molecule what one is using one should be well aware of and for a therapist one of the idea is actually be comfortable with one or two frequently using and looking into all the aspects related which work out to be much one much important to this thing we had one patient to who almost was using for nearly about 5 uh, plus uh, years and for the last 2 years the dose of sildenafil used was around uh, 1200 to 1400 mg per day but we very extensively investigated this fellow and we published this particular paper what was found was that hardly there was any difficulty if you try to look at uh, the literature that is available 700 to 800 mg of uh, sildenafil citrate consumed accidentally hardly produced any worthwhile changes so many of the times what we are hesitant to treat it only indicates the therapist's anxiety rather than actually the type of problem if you have chosen chosen a patient properly hardly it is going to make much difference actually non responders are many in fact uh, 25% of the patients may not respond with the regular dosage and few of the regular uh, variables keeping in mind the currently recommended eight doses you try it and if it doesn't respond in fact uh, it can be treated as a non responder and one of the most important factor what actually has been recommended is understood is actually the failure to use adequate sexual stimulation as one of the the key important in fact what i can say is if somebody takes the tablets and sleeps possibly he will get a very good sleep maximum hairs on his head will stand up so again and again i am trying to emphasize spend some time talk to the patients relatives uh, not relatives the partner that how precisely this particular medication has to be used failure to use adequate dosage failure to wait an adequate amount of time there is a for example tadalafil around 4 to 6 hours a time is one of the most ideal thing what actually has been recommended for sildenafil citrate about maybe 1 to 2 hours which is actually has been considered as one of the extremely important uh, step so what one need to do keep counseling optimal treatment of concurrent diseases treatment of concurrent hypogonadism if it is present this is one of the area which is uh, missed out very commonly and this w world psychiatric association has come out with certain other parameters see for example they have axis 1 the pr problem for which the patient has presented axis 1 has the section b wherein the comorbidity the depression as one of the most important common point which actually is one of the major source of uh, problem for individuals not responding where necessary hypogonadism is the cause testosterone restores the responsiveness and this is the only the indication for use of testosterone according to me some patients may respond better to one drug when another has failed more frequent regular dosing regimens whether actually this uh, works out we really don't know but people have found you can try to combine uh, two three different things depending upon how actually you go about it. say apomorphine it acts at the central level to the sildenafil citrate which acts at the cavernous level apomorphine and pentolamine agents using via cyclic gmp 
agents promoting smc relaxation decreasing smc continuation so multiple permutation combinations including say for example uh, there are certain specific drugs which act at uh, post synaptic sensory level all of these type of things can be one actually one can uh, consider precautions before in fact these are all few of the things which actually been there earlier what one uh, can say about this use of what we call uh, nitrites and uh, nitrite donors as one of the the indication contraindication but now the things have improved to an extent that if it is a short duration drug in between period one can actually try to use this there are very specific contraindications and we are all uh, well aware of it and this is not my presentation today the present of uh, myocardial infarction and uh, threatening arrhythmia in the last 6 months hypotension patients with unstable angina and any form of organic nitrate there are the one on the foot how one can go about there are people who have now studied uh, as a single dose to in fact the small dose every day whether it can work out in that particular fashion and uh, dosage adjustment were necessary concomitantly when you are using certain types of drugs so what one can say is if you are having an individual with a desire problem pd5 one inhibitors are the not the first line drug one should in fact correct the desire problem and then pd5 inhibitors in fact it works better if somebody is having sexual aversion such as the disorders of course primarily this is found in case of females this has to be treated like any other phobia see just like in case of psychiatry we talk about whole range of treatment techniques available including antidepressants it may be actually one androgens where to use hypogonadism or a very 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 specific use for this in fact many of the presentations have already covered this particular aspect let me come to the psychiatry we all use day in day out ssris antipsychotics and range of other drugs what actually has been found is there is a very high prevalence of sexual problems with the addition of what we basically call antidepressants and uh, what this pdf inhibitors have brought one of good news sir cheer is that all of these type of things can be corrected very comfortably they actually affect different different levels the functionality as sexuality and we are all well aware uh, there is a data available say for example something like uh, mono amino oxidase inhibitors having the least amount of problems agomelatin actually hardly any significant problem too in fact there certain other antidepressants which have variable degrees of uh, problems what actually was found was that paroxetin has one of the highest uh, production of uh, inhibition of ejaculation so also the type of difficulty related to the erection in fact there is actually the studies to prove that this paroxetin is an absolute uh, arginine synthase inhibitor so one has to very well keep it in mind how much uh, what is using for what purpose and what are the other drugs concomitantly the patient is using as one of the very important uh, usage on demand usage and depoxetin came into being and when necessary only one can treat to use this is one of the things and this is actually applicable when other anxiety and depression and such other problems are actually not being very significantly present so medication induced sexual dysfunctions are many and several approaches are there to handle this determinative functioning before treatment how it was attend to medical psychological and interpersonal issues choose an antidepressant which is actually least likely to produce difficulty vilazodone in fact the placebo had much more problems than actually the drugs themselves in fact so these are few of the methodologies one should follow briefly stopping offending drug switching drugs reversal with uh, amantadine dextroamphetamine cyproheptadine and certain things like that and where necessary pd5 inhibitors as one of the extremely common uh, thing which has been actually found to be very very useful there are ejaculation difficulty it has produced certain of these drugs how actually one can go about the whole range of data is available actually one can go this is one of the matrix of treatment strategies how one can usually use a combination drug this is one of the pd5 inhibitors subsequently what one has understood so there are central acting drugs peripheral acting drugs there are cent central initiators and there are what tactical can be conditioners any one of this type of uh, what we basically call uh, the box a uh, two drugs can be combined where necessary so th this is one of the very very important aspect one should remember and in those very resistant cases also one can actually succeed in uh, what we basically call in managing those who don't respond at all to erectors to in fact the process is there are few of those type of things and this is not my uh, area of attention today what actually in pd5 inhibitor and subsequently 
of course, pineal shockwave therapy and how much it is actually going to be beneficial. And in so many fashion, many of the other physical methodologies helpful in uh, making evaluation to treatment strategies, people have come out. So the carry home message, let me just very fast uh, we go through. What actually we have understood now is currently the arrival of uh, PDF in vitro subsequently, pre-morbid sexual functioning, what it is, we can go up to that particular level only. Primary psychiatric disorder and comorbid psychiatric disorder are important aspects, definitely do keep it in mind. Physical illness, medications, concomitant medications, all have a very definitive role to play. Whether psychological sophistication present or not, one of the key important to determinate. In our clinical practice, there are people who come and they want just a tablet and he is not willing to become with a partner. He is not willing to work out the whole range of uh, psychopathologies, what actually he is carrying. In fact, the shortcut method may be the straight away using PDF inhibitors of a proper evaluating. But if somebody who is having capacity to understand and who is willing to participate properly in therapy, the whole range of uh, motivation and psychological sophistication can be incorporated together. What Levin mentioned, identity and the sexual function are one aspect of it. That seventh component, emotional satisfaction, is extremely important. I still remember very vividly almost once the uh, Viagra was introduced. Two years later, there was a Chinese study, almost studying about 2,000 plus couples who came out with an idea that erection alone will solve sexual problems is one of the major myths actually what we are carrying. Unless you try to attend the relationship, it is not likely to work. In fact, this is one of the PDF inhibitor, one of the carry home message I would like to mention that this emotional satisfaction is one of the most important, the seventh component what Levin mentioned. And uh, Unless this particular uh, aspect is looked into, various myths and misconceptions people carry that need to be corrected. In fact, still there may be partners who believe that uh, getting erection will solve all the problems. But all said and done, we are all well aware the partner is, herself is one of the best aphrodisiac and the mood as one of the, the key important component which can enhance the capacity. The size of the penis and lot many things, in fact, uh, not going to necessarily matter. In fact, what is necessary is the sensation, what is actually in the vision of about maybe two and a half to three inches. But all said and done, understanding women is actually one of the extremely important component. Viagra works in men, the same pathology, psychopathology, or in fact, the mechanism of action, this PD5 inhibitors don't work in case of uh, women. So people have spoken about estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, what we talk about, but now we talk about oxytocin. In fact, the whole female uh, psychopathology revolves around this oxytocin and this is one of the key important component for orgasm. What is this? Touch as one of the very important aspect. And we are all well aware, before marriage, after marriage, so many issues happen not because of anything, this whole aspect of touch. So long you are able to treat your wife as your girlfriend, in fact, the problem can be solved much more easily. In fact, one has to spend some time with the partner is one of the very, very important component that is actually necessary. And uh, when you are trying to do, look at uh, the female sexuality, girl doesn't look for uh, size of the penis or the six packs in the abdomen. If the cure is the cuddle. In fact, the whole aspect is, in fact, this is one of the very big, in fact, this is one of the key slide I am really present in many of the presentations. With fantasy alone, there is a very limited number of women who reach orgasm. With intercourse situations, maybe about one third, but with the touch and other related things, in fact, this particular number can be increased drastically. And with the use of vibrators, almost about 100% this is what actually, in fact, this may be a little highly reported figures, but all said and done. What actually I'm trying to convey method is, what we are trying to look at bringing about erection in case of men only looks at only one aspect of the problem. There are not many things. So treating sexual problems in fact, in fact involves, dysfunction cannot be treated in isolation, Individual seen in the context of relationship, relationship and relationship. I try to emphasize this again and again. Biopsychosocial model works best. Helping couple function optimally should be our aim. It is not just prescribing a PD fine inhibitor. Basic information on anatomy, physiology, eliminating myths and misconceptions, removing performance anxiety, and individualizing treatment are one of the key areas. What is there in store for us in the future? Optimizing treatment, adequate attempts proper dose adjustment, 
partner sexual dysfunction correcting it simultaneously whole lot of uh, what we basically call uh, modification or risk factors and sex education is one of the key component and uh, however educated here in fact we have seen people double graduates uh, double post graduates phd holders not having any knowledge about sexual functioning and related combination of therapies as one of the most important thing depending upon if you never try you will never succeed don't be hesitant to use pd5 inhibitors and where necessary don't hesitate to treat incorporate a comprehensive way of managing the whole issue thank you very very much i have tried to convey the message that even today though pd5 inhibitor came and uh, revolutionized the whole treatment methodology none of the other treatment techniques which are necessary that means managing relationship it has not uh, ebbed anyway it is absolutely necessary to make a very comprehensive uh, impact on the couple thank you very very much for uh, giving this wonderful opportunity for me.